Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Tuesday. We are going to dive right in with our essential question here. We're studying this the entire time we're in module one. And that question is, why do people explore the sea? Our focusing question is, how do artists explore the sea? And these are artists like, let's see, we've got Sarah Teasdale and William Steig, and then the woodblock print by Hokusai. And our content framing questions today is, distill. What is the central message of Amos and Boris? And what this means is we're going to take everything we've learned about finding central message, using illustrations, using art elements. We're going to put it all together so that way you can find the central message of Amos and Boris. All right. So what I've done here is I have created a very short video that shows you the illustrations from Amos and Boris. This is gonna help you answer your questions. This is also going to be useful to refer back to in other assignments like on Seesaw. So when this posts on Edpuzzle, you can also find this presentation in your Google Classroom. Now the question we're being asked is, based on the title and illustrations throughout Amos and Boris, what is the book mostly about? So be thinking about the title, be thinking about these pictures, and tell me what you think this book is mostly about. All right, and then we have this page. This is page 13. Um, they're not numbered, but page 13 asks, well, no, it doesn't. Page 13 says, as he was asking himself these dreadful questions, a huge head burst through the surf of, surface of the water and loomed up over him. It was a whale. What sort of fish are you? The whale asked. You must be one of a kind. I'm not a fish, said Amos. I'm a mouse, which is a mammal, the highest form of life. I live on land. Holy clam and cuttlefish, said the whale. I'm a mammal myself, though I live in the sea. Call me Boris, he said, or he added. Now, question number one for this page is, describe the meeting between Amos and Boris on this page. How does this set up the beginning of their relationship? So you're going to answer that in Ed Puzzle. And what I want you to be thinking about is, how, what, do these, what do these two, what do Amos and Boris realize they have in common at this point? And what does that mean for their friendship? That's what you're doing for number one. Number two, the it says, how does the illustration on this page clarify the meaning of the word loomed? So it says a huge head burst through the surface of the water and loomed up over him. So what I want, how does this illustration help? So imagine you're Amos, the mouse, and you're swimming and treading water and you're trying not to drown. Uh, and all of a sudden this giant whale looms up over you. What do you think the word loom means based on that illustration? How does that illustration help you? Those are the two questions you're answering for number two. Then we have page, I believe this is page 19. Yes, page 19. They became the closest possible friends. They told each other about their lives, their ambitions, they shared their deepest secrets with each other. The whale was very curious about life on land and was sorry he could never experience it. Amos was fascinated by the whale's accounts of what went on deep under the sea. Amos sometimes enjoyed running up and down the whale's back for exercise. When he was hungry, he ate plankton. The only thing he, met, he missed was fresh, unsalty water. So the question we're answering about this page now is, how does William Steig describe the relationship between Amos and Boris on this page? He says a lot about their friendship, um, especially in the first part of this passage. So pay attention there. And then part B of this question asks, what text evidence supports this description? So tell me, you, use quotes to tell me what William Steig, how William Steig describes the relationship. 
And that would answer that question, both of those questions if you use a quote to answer it. Now we have page 20. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you and then I'll read the question. The time came to say goodbye. They were at the shore. I wish we could be friends forever, said Boris. We will be friends forever, but we can't be together. You must live on land and I must live at sea. I'll never forget you, though. And you'll, you can be sure I'll never forget you, said Amos. I will always be grateful for you saving my life. And I want you to remember that if you ever need my help, I'd be more than glad to give it. How he could ever possibly help Boris, Amos didn't know, but he knew how willing he was. The whale couldn't take Amos all the way into land. They said their, their last goodbye and Amos dived off Boris's back and swam, into the, swam to the sand. There we go. <laughs> How does the dialogue on this page add to your understanding of the relationship between Amos and Boris? Now remember, dialogue is that conversation between two characters. So think about the conversation that's happening between Amos and Boris here. How does, how does this conversation help you understand more about their friendship? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to review a few things before I set you up off on your own. We're going to talk about first how did we identify the central message in the sea wind. So remember we did this just yesterday um, where we had to prove what the central message was. Um, and we, we said poets choose their words carefully and arrange ideas in stanzas to convey the central message. So let's look at that. So we have our two stanzas, one and two. Our central message was the sea can be a beautiful place, but it can also be scary and mysterious. And we found that out because the ideas that were uh, that were separated in stanzas, all of the ideas in this first stanza um, kind of made us think that the sea was beautiful. There was a lot of beautiful language there. And then when we listen to that second stanza, there's some scary language in there. And then the, the author even calls it the terrible call of the sea. And when I think of terrible, I think of uh, terror, which is scary. Um, and so it kind of that, that last stanza really made me think that um, maybe that's the sea is scary and mysterious. All right, then we have the, how did we find the central message in the woodblock print? Remember, artists use the elements of art to convey the central message. So we talked about the central message being the sea is powerful. And we looked at composition, color, and line. And let's talk about all three of those things right here um, and talk about how we got the central message. If we look at the composition, that's like size and placement of images. And the biggest image, the, this, when we talk about size, the biggest thing in this image is that wave. So doesn't that make it seem powerful? Something's really big. Doesn't that seem like it has a lot of power? So this wave shows us that the sea is powerful. Now, when we talk about color, we also talk, we, we talked about contrast. See how it's all pale back here in the background? But these waves are these bright blues. Like, I think they're really pretty. So they draw your eye forward to the waves. You don't, you kind of just like ignore what's going on in the background because it's such a light color. But your eyes are so interested. They want to look at all the different parts of these waves because of all the color. And line is the way your eyes move when you are looking at a piece of art. So if you see my cursor, you can see that the waves look like they're moving this way and then they're about to crash forward. So it's kind of going in a circle. So we're able to see just how, how much. And if you look at the placement of other objects, like the boats, these boats are going underwater, this little mountain in the background, it's actually a big mountain, but it looks tiny compared to this wave. And so if this wave is making big things look tiny, that's how I definitely know that this sea is powerful. Okay, so now our question is, how will you identify the central message in Amos and Boris? 
Writers use specific elements such as character, plot, word choice, etc. to convey the central message. So in Seesaw, what you're going to do is you're going to complete the story map for Amos and Boris. We've already worked on the story map part. Now there's a second part that you're going to work on. Uh, and this time you're going to include the central message of our story and the text evidence to support it. So you need the central message and like two key details from the story that prove that this is your central message. Okay, friends? That's all I have for you today. We are doing awesome. I'm so proud of all the hard work we're doing. Um, keep all of it up. Bye, friends.